Well, explain to us how it works. I understand the acceptance rate. It's harder to get into than Harvard. Uh, you give so uh, the people you do accept uh, jobs for four years at various technology companies from Facebook to Google. Tell us how it works. Yeah, Emily, thanks again for having me. So, Andela is simple. We find and create a platform for the brightest, most driven developers across Africa to work with some of the top tech companies in the world. We do that by combining a combination of data science around the application process. We've had over 45,000 applicants to the program with outstanding education technology and ultimately are creating a cadre of Africa's first elite engineering teams. This is the Africa's first elite engineering organization. I find the, the demand here so interesting and reflective of perhaps what's going on in the, the broader Africa tech scene. Explain that to us. You know, how many engineers are out there looking for work, looking for better training and hoping to, you know, get into, you know, the broader technology industry? Well, the way to look at it and really the founding belief of Andela is that brilliance is actually pretty evenly distributed around the world. Opportunity isn't. And so part of the reason we started Andela was to help really change that ratio and in the process connect great engineers with top companies. It turns out that there are a bunch of really, really talented engineers, technologists, and folks in this space across the continent, which by the way is 1.1 billion people and the youngest continent on the planet. There are quite a few folks interested in the space. So Mark Zuckerberg recently visited on his trip to Nigeria and I'm curious what have you learned from him what sort of exposure have you gotten to Mark and Priscilla and how has that helped you You know Mark and I spoke early on about about Andela and really the education space uh, and why Andela was growing so quickly but Mark and Priscilla were interested in Andela because of the opportunity to really unlock human capacity uh, and expand human capacity around the world. Uh, obviously, he knows a little bit about software development. And we didn't know when we were going into you know, the early discussions that there was a chance we'd be able to actually help him on his first trip in Africa to experience some of those extraordinary developers. But it's certainly been a fun journey working with him on it. Africa, of course, has been plagued by blackouts and power disruption, certainly not good if you're in technology. How have you navigated these kinds of challenges and, and what needs to be done for things to get better? You know, that's, there are components of that that are true, but the reality of Africa today is much different. It's very different from what most people think of it as. We have, for instance, a better internet connection in Lagos, Nigeria than I do in Manhattan right now. And so, yes, there are challenges, no question. But at the same time, if you think about in advance how you're going to build out the infrastructure and how you're going to work around some of those challenges, you can actually make incredible things happen. And quickly, how do you tend to scale this up? You had 40,000 applicants or something like that. You could only take 0.7% of them. How do you increase that number? You know, 0.7% of over a billion people is still a pretty big number. Uh, mm -hmm. Andela is not going to be Facebook. We will never have uh, a billion people working with it. It's not the intent. It's been called a uh, mix of Rose Scholarship meets Pivotal Labs for software engineers in, in Africa. And so when we think about scale, yes, we absolutely plan to, but that looks more like training 100,000 extraordinary developers over the next decade. And in the process, we believe we can change the way that the tech world views talent uh, and what an engineer looks like.